We're going to start with Blender, and the version that uh, has just been released is Blender 3.5, so we'll take a look at that. You can see the website here, blender.org, and one of the very best things about it, besides uh, all of its outstanding features, is the fact that it is absolutely free. It's extraordinary. I don't know if there's any other software in the world that says uh, that you can do as much with, and it really is amazing. So when you first open it, you'll actually see something that might look something like this, and you can select the type of file that you want to edit. You can also click here and go to the manual. And this is probably a good place to start. The manual is going to cover a lot more information than what I'm going to provide in the next few minutes here. I'm going to select general. We could do TD, uh, 2D animation. That's, that would be using grease pencil. Uh, but I'm going to start with general. So this is a 3D world. Down in the bottom left hand corner, you should see the mouse and any keys that I press. So if I press the A key, there you can see what happened. I'm going to hit it again uh, just to disable that. Uh, a selects all, by the way. That is a fairly important key to use. I'll show you some other keys while I'm here. If we want to change our view in the viewport display, this is our, our, 3, our 3D window, I should say. Uh, all we do is press numbers on the number pad. Now, the number pad is on the far right-hand side. If you have a laptop, you may not have that number pad, but on a full keyboard, on the right-hand side, there's the number keys. And so I'm going to hit 7, which takes you to top view. And you, we can also uh, get to top view using the buttons over here, but I'm just going to use the number pad. I'm used to using that. And you can see the position of the camera here gives you a suggestion that the view has changed. Okay, we were originally here, okay, which is three in the number pad. I switched to seven. And it takes a bit of getting used to this to know exactly where you are. So one is side view, three is the other side view, seven is top view. One, three, seven. I use those a lot. Uh, you can also go to five, which gives you a perspective view. Okay, so let me just see if I can illustrate that a little bit better. Here's our one where we started. And if I hit the five button, we're going to go into perspective view. Let's angle this. I'm going to press the middle mouse button and just give it a bit of an angle. If I hit five, that turns off perspective view. Hit it again, it turns it back on. I normally work in perspective view, but it's totally up to you how you want to work. So one and three are side views. Most, uh, most often, I'm going to try and work in side view, at least initially, unless I need the top view for some reason. Uh, it gets confusing if you spend too much time in top view, and you might kind of get uh, disoriented as to, to which way you're facing. So back to side view. Here we go. I hit the three button, so it takes us right back to the origin. All right, that's the number pad. We can do more as well. I can use the four and the six to slowly spin around. I'm using the four right now. I just hit it 23 times, as you can see here. Now I'll use the six, it spins us back the other way. Okay, if I hit the number three, it takes us back to the origin. I can also use eight and five, or sorry, eight and two. So I'm using eight, spinning up uh, vertically in a circle. I'm using two now to spin the other way. I don't know why I don't use that all that often, but it is. it certainly can be handy. Uh, I most often just use the middle mouse button if I need to find exactly a position where I need to go to get a better angle to see if one of meshing is working out. So one, three, seven, uh, eight spins, and there's also nine, which gives you a, uh, just changes your angle by 90 degrees. I think I'm right on that. Somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong on that. Uh, I don't often use the nine. Uh, zero is handy, and that's an important one. That gives you your camera view. All right. And if you're going to render something, which is F12, you're going to want to use uh, the camera view right before you do that. You can hit escape here or click the X. Um, and the camera view is nice because it shows you what you can actually see. Okay, and that is our camera up here. I'm clicking it to select it. You can see there's a light here and there's a, a 3D object. The other thing that's in this window right now is the 3D cursor, which is right here. If we go into, um, let's see, let's go to, let's go here to cursor. If I click that button and click anywhere, that will move the 3D cursor. Uh, I'm used to going shift and then right mouse button. Shift, right mouse button. And what that does is move the cursor, but you can certainly just left click if you select the cursor move button over here. Okay, I'll go back to select and select the, uh, the square. Uh, next thing, I'm, gonna, I'm just using the middle mouse right now. You can see that down here. Next thing I'm going to do is just take a look at viewport shading. So we can go with wireframe so we can actually see uh, the, the outline. Uh, we can see all the polygons. We can see exactly how this object is constructed because the only thing we're looking at are the actual wireframes. We're not seeing the surfaces. Next button over. This isn't shading yet, but this gives us a solid view of the object. Now we can see some shading here. And finally, this is a rendered view. 
which depending on which render engine you use, there can be some delay and also depending on the complexity of the image that you're trying to render. Uh, it, you pick whichever one you like to work in. I often go back and forth between wireframe and material preview just so I can have a look at what's, uh, uh, what it's going to look like. Okay, I'm going to actually get rid of this. So I'm going to hit the X key. And I'm going to delete it. I'm gonna, I need the cursor back here. If you go Shift C, that'll center the cursor. Uh, I think if I move it over here, I'll just grab it, move it over here. We can also go Shift S. And Shift S is actually more powerful because now we can select any of these. Cursor to grid, we can change it. Shift C though is probably what you want uh, when you're first starting it out. Now we have a problem. Look what happened. The cursor is down here and if we add an object, we're going we're gonna to have some issues. So if you hold down the Shift button and press the middle mouse, Shift plus middle mouse, we can now move that 3D window and position an object wherever we want. I can use a scroll, uh, scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in or out, although without an object there, it doesn't really, it doesn't really help a whole lot. Okay, so we want to add an object. So I'm going to go Add Mesh. We're going to make an ice cream cone, by the way, and I'll go Cone, and we've got an object. Uh, the only problem is it's upside down. I'm going to use my three, so we go back home, or one, either one, and I'm going to rotate it. And to rotate it, I simply hit the R key, R for rotate. If I hold down the control button, okay, it, it will, uh, it'll force it to go to even increments as it's, uh, as it's going around, constrains it to even increments. And I'll go, whoops, I'll go right there, click the button, and now we've got the cone where we want it. Only problem is that's not exactly the shape that we want. So let's go to wireframe mode. And now we're in object mode. And before I finish with this, I want to just show you a couple of things. If we want to, we can hit the S button to scale. We can hit the R button. We've seen that to rotate. And we can hit the G key to grab it and move it wherever we want. Okay, I'm going to undo that. Control Z. Uh, I could also click move. And then we get these little arrows, which allows us to move it just in specific planes. Okay, I'm going to undo all that, put it back in the beginning. All right, so that is uh, the basic movements that we can do inside of object mode. We can also go into edit mode, and edit mode is quite a bit more powerful. Um, but <laughs> in the most basic, so if all vertices are selected, and you can see they're all selected because they're all yellow right now, if they're all selected and I hit the S key to scale it, it looks like it's doing the same thing. R to rotate, looks like it's doing the same thing, and G to grab. The difference is though, I can go down and grab one vertice, and all I did was click down the bottom here, and now if I hit the G key to grab it, look at this, I can change the shape of it. What I think I'll do actually is use this mode here, okay, the move mode, and now I can actually grab the blue arrow and move it very precisely in just that plane. And look at that, we're already getting something that's starting to look like a cone. If we go to the Material button, yeah, we can actually see it's, it's looking okay. It's going to need some color, but that's okay. Hit the one button, take me back to side view, and I'm going to go back into wireframe mode for now. I'm going to, I want to deselect that, and I could deselect by clicking any other vertice, um, but another way to do that is to hit the A key. Hit the A key once, selects them all, hit it twice, and it deselects everything. Then I can use the B key to do a select like this. And now all vertices are selected except for that one. And I know it because if I grab on here, look what happens. I can hit the Control Z key. I could grab it with the G key. Okay, we don't want that kind of shape. But we can do something else. It's really, really cool. We can extrude. And extrude, I'll zoom in so you can see this. What extrude does, and remember, this is the bottom vertice is not selected. We hit the E key, and I'm going to go back to select them. We don't, we don't need those little uh, arrows in there. And I hit the E key. And then I drag it. Look at that. All of a sudden, we've got all those vertices repeated, and it continues the shape. If we go to our solid view here, you can see that it actually uh, repeats the shape as well, too. It's not just extending or drawing lines, but it's also filling them in as well, creating new polygons. All right, I'll go back to wireframe mode here. I don't really want that shape, though. Um, so what I could do is maybe go like this. I'm going to uh, actually, I'm going to use the arrows here. I'm going to drag it back down. And I'm going to scale this out, S for scale. I'm going to extrude again, only a tiny little bit. Scale it out. Extrude again. Scale it out. 
extrude again, scale it out, and we'll extrude more or less straight up here. And we could even put like a little lip on this thing. I'll just hit S to scale, or sorry, I'm gonna hit E to extrude, I should say, and then S to scale. And what that should do if I've done this, yeah, you can see what it's done is it's actually uh, created another circle because we extruded but didn't actually move anything, and then I scaled it out. You have to just try that yourself to see what that does. I'm gonna extrude again one more time up, and I think I've done with my ice cream cone. Okay, I know it doesn't really look like an ice cream cone. This looks like an ice cream cone that would hold a lot of ice cream. I kind of like that. All right, I'm gonna go to this mode just so we can have a look at it. And you might wanna set it smooth. There's buttons you can use to, uh, we'll, we'll get to those in a second. Hit the number one key, I'm gonna go back out. We're back in object mode, and I wanna be in edit mode. I just hit the tab button, and that puts us in edit mode. Okay, tab puts us in edit, or we can use uh, the selections up here. There we go, edit mode. And you know what, I'm gonna just click the bottom um, vertice and drag this down just a little bit more. Okay, I think I'm happy with that cone. Um, let's add some ice cream. And the first thing you want to do is make sure that you hit the A key twice and deselect everything. Next thing, the 3D cursor is down here. Let's move the 3D cursor up here. And we're going to add, we can go Shift A or we can add like this, but I prefer Shift A, it's faster. I'm going to add a mesh and make it a UV sphere. And when that first happens, we can click down here and we can actually change. You can see that it's changing the number of polygons or segments. Uh, and the default is 32. I'm just going to go back and set it to 32. And we can just uh, shut that down. And that ice cream looks way too small. We're going to scale it up quite a bit. Okay. If we've done this right, it should be aligned still with the bottom ice cream. I'm going to grab it and it looked pretty good, actually. I hit escape there. Back down to side view, and let's just grab the ice cream and drop it right inside there like that. Okay, now we're going to switch over, and we're going to actually have a look at the material preview here, and it's not looking very good. One thing that's problematic, if you can see this, is it looks more like a golf ball than an ice cream. The cone, we might want to leave those lines on there. I don't know, maybe it looks a bit like a waffle cone or something. Uh, but on the ice cream, we definitely don't want those, those faces. It's not going to look good. So what we'll do is we will go to uh, Object, and we're going to go Shade Smooth. And again, I'm not sure if you can really see that, but it, it should set it to be smooth. Uh, why don't we throw some colors on here now? So I'm going to hit the Tab button. Uh, actually, I'm not going to hit the Tab button. I'm going to select. Oh, and it's not letting me select all of a sudden. Ah, that's because I'm in cursor mode. There you go. So make sure you're careful about which one of these uh, buttons you've selected. Okay, now I can select the cone. And I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to go to shading. And with the cone selected, I'm going to go add, okay. And with the cone selected, I'm going to say new. And then all I do is change our base color here. And I want it to look something like a cone. You can see it's really bright. I don't know what color a cone is. I could just darken it here. Oh, that looks kind of like a cone, doesn't it? I don't know. Close enough. And we'll select the ice cream, click new, and we'll select the color. And I'm going to make it, <laughs> uh, is this bubblegum flavor maybe? I don't know. I'm more of a chocolate fan. Let's try and see if we can get a nice chocolate flavor in there. Oh, ah, dark chocolate. I like it. Okay. All right, my chocolate ice cream cone is ready to go here. You might not be able to see the keys, keys here, but that's okay. I'm going to go shift, middle mouse, and actually I could also go like this to give me a little more room inside of here. Or actually, you know what I could do? Let's just go back. We've got that done. Let's go back to uh, layout. There we go. That's better. And from layout mode, what I actually want to do is go into sculpt mode and use the sculpt tools. And there's lots of them. And if I just hold this over top, I'm not sure if you can see that, as I move back and forth, it starts to give this some texture, some surface texture, because ice cream is not typically perfectly smooth. At least there, you can see what's going on here as I move this. And you can try some of the different brushes that are associated with the, uh, the Sculpt tool. There's lots of them to experiment with. I'm just going to use this one for now. I'll show you one or two more in a minute. I'm just going to go around the whole blob of ice cream and just kind of randomly move stuff and see what happens. Okay. And you can change the radius. We can increase this a little bit if we want to. It's a little bit bigger now. 
We can change the strength so that it impacts it a little more. Um, and we can also go plus or minus. So now it pushes it in rather than pulling it out. So that's important. That's very, very helpful. Uh, in fact, that might be useful in just a second here. There might be some areas I want to push in a bit. Yeah, I'm going to hit minus, go to the side here, and just push that in a little bit. Okay, it looks a little bit bumpy. Don't worry too much about that. We can also smooth it. And I'll let you go through these. You can find the one that does the smoothing. Uh, draw sharp, clay, yeah. Layer, inflate, blob, crease, smooth. Okay, so that might let us smooth that a little bit. Now, the problem is, though, um, on a warm day when you're eating ice cream, it usually kind of melts over the side. And we want to show that here. I've got it on minus, don't I? Yeah, let's go to plus. And we're just going to kind of pull this out and down a little bit. So we actually get a blob of ice cream that's kind of hanging over the side. That looks pretty good. You can see it actually went underneath, which now I didn't really want that, but that's okay for now. There we go. Yeah, things don't quite look right because of the nature of my ice cream cone, but just try to ignore that for now. It's not going to be perfect. All right, that's the kind of ice cream you want where it's like flowing over the sides. Okay, we can, we can kind of just keep going with this. Keep working it until you get a shape that you like. You can, uh, again, you can push. If it's sticking out too far, you can push this back in. Okay, so I'm going to move that back in a little bit. And you can also smooth it. But what I want to do is keep it so it's hanging down, just not so it's out so far. There we go. That's a bit better. We're not going to get this perfect. This is just a, a, a quick start. That's all it is. All right, I think we have an ice cream cone. It doesn't look too bad, actually. Uh, let's see. What else could we do here that would be fun? I think what we should do is make a cherry. Let's do that. So I'm going to get out of sculpt mode. We're going to go back to object mode. I'm going to deselect everything, the A key twice. I think I hit it three times. If, you, if I hit it again once, it selects everything. So if I scale it up, everything scales. Uh, we don't want to do that. Uh, normally, you, right, you left click to just select one object at a time and work with it. Uh, I can see right now it's going to be a problem because everything is actually uh, too large for the camera. So I'm going to hold the shift button down and select both the ice cream and the cone and hit the S button to scale. And then I'll use the G key to grab them. And I'm going to actually rotate it a bit too, just like that, so it fits in there. That ice cream blob is way too big, but that's okay. Um, okay, so we're going to make a cherry to put on top of this. I'll hit the number one. I don't know why. We don't really need to do that, but I'll do that anyway. Uh, so we're in side view or three button, I guess. And then I'm going to, 3D cursor is right here. That's where I want the cherry to go. And I'm going to go add or shift A. Well, instead of a mesh, let's do a surface. Let's do a NURBS sphere. And these are quite cool because if we go into edit mode, you can click up here or hit the tab key. And I select one vertice. Watch this. This is cool. Okay, let's try selecting just this one. And I grab that and push it in. Now I'm going to have to rotate it. Okay, hit the tab button. And look at this. It's pretty cool. It actually can look a lot like a cherry. There we go. I'm going to rotate it. I know you're thinking that doesn't look like a cherry, but I'm not finished yet. We'll grab that. And we have something that looks kind of like a cherry. I'm going to go to top view 7 and try to get this more centered in the top of my ice cream cone. Grab it like that. And we need to give it a color. So let's go to shading. It sometimes takes a minute for this to load. Just be patient. Cherry is selected. I'm going to click New. We're going to click here. You've seen this before. And I'm going to select a red color that looks a bit like a cherry. Uh, and I maybe drop this down a little bit so we get a nice dark colored, dark red colored cherry. It's a little bit too much. There we go. It's not bad. Okay, let's go back to layout. We could rotate that a little bit more just so it looks a little more natural. Uh, and if we deselect that or select something else, oops, there we go. You can start to see that's actually looking pretty good. It's not bad. 